All right. Well, Hello, everyone. Yeah, go ahead, Charles. Oh, I was just going to say, I hope you're all having a wonderful week. Happy Thursday or Friday, yeah. depending on where you're at. Um, especially happy Friday to you, if it is Friday. Um, thanks for coming. And uh, yeah, this is a big... This is a big one. I'm excited for this discussion. Um, so I'm just deciding on the fly whether we want to give it another couple minutes, but I think I think we can get going here. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm excited for this discussion. I think it's going to be good. Um, what we're going to do is Bebus has a small, uh, short presentation to make, um, and so we're going to blast that into your brains and eyes um, at the very beginning. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to give the floor to Beavis, um, at the outset, and I would ask everybody to just, uh, type any questions you have in the chat, um, as, as he's doing that, I will log them. Um, but maybe just take, take a moment, um, you know, relax, take in the information, um, and, uh, maybe just sort of, um, ponder it for, for as long as you would like um <laughs> and then and then afterwards we'll we'll I'll, I'll log all your questions we'll take your questions and um we'll start a, a sort of a back and forth discussion after that so um <laughs> well Sweet. too bad no okay cool yeah um beavis take it away um cool yeah um so to give you guys some context uh this is a presentation that i took to denver with me um and you know uh it's it's heavily slimmed down um, just, you know, because, uh, I want context to be really tight here, but, um, it should give you a really good idea of why we're doing this and it should do it very, very quickly. Um, so let me first figure out the best way to share my screen here. Okay, great. Um, so, you know, this, this is for like, uh, a more like hedgy sort of VC type audience. So just keep that in mind, uh, when you're having a look at it, but, um, you know, l let's kind of start off with the kicker being investing in DeFi sucks. Um, you know, and, and this is a problem that we've quote unquote solved internally, uh, through oath chapters and, and that we're getting an insane amount of market validation for. Uh, and I'll kind of drill into that uh, in the later slides. But as we all know, risks are astronomical. Um, so finding a team that knows how to manage security and risk in DeFi is borderline impossible. Um, and finding a team with enough autism uh, to actually be in it for the tech uh, is like an extra layer of impossible. Um, and, and we kind of check both boxes there. Um, narrative hopping uh, really, really sucks. Um, so if you're like me, you know, you're more interested in working, creating, doing whatever than you are necessarily trading or chasing trends or even, frankly, making money. Um, and, uh, you know, we with chapters are, are solving this. Um, so stake token, get exposure to, to every chain, extremely dope. Um, and, and another big problem is there's not a lot of room for size. Um, so this is like probably not something that, that all of us necessarily relate to. Um, but when you're talking DeFi, it's like the deal flow is so thin, uh, and every, every VC highly vetted MIT project is so crowded that, you know, you look at price to earning ratios in DeFi for projects like Pendle, for projects like Aave, for all the cool stuff, for all the good stuff, the big stuff. It's just total ass. And, you know, you need to hope that VCs and market makers are aligned well enough that they're not just going to dump it to oblivion based on cash flow. Um, and then I think the biggest rub, one of the biggest problems we're solving, if not the biggest, is that for foundations, onboarding reputable projects, especially mid-market projects, uh, is total ass. Um, and, and you know, one of one of the ways we're solving this is we're kind of taking a big team with you know upper market service upper market skill sets upper market security and risk management um, and doing many small very retail friendly very uh you know small user whatever friendly um projects and we're finding an insane amount of success and you guys aren't going to see this until we start launching au and the ironclad token and all these projects upcoming um, but people are getting FOMO, 
foundations are starting to fight for our attention. And the biggest issue we see is Oath and Grain are not positioned at all to capture that upside. Like if we are the centralized hub for mid-market DeFi, if we are the team for mid-market DeFi, why are we just on a competitor's chain? Why are we over here? Why are we so small? Why are we all segregated, separated, whatever? Um, it's just kind of dooky. Uh, and, you know, in, in moving to Ethereum, in merging, in narrowing the value proposition, we solve uh, most of these issues. Um, so how do we solve them? Uh, we, we, we got a little modular with it. Um, and, you know, the modular meme, uh, I think, is a good one because it kind of created uh, a way for us to express how we're approaching horizontal growth in a single word. Um, you know, ignoring ignoring what we already know and think about modularity, uh, you know, I like to think of our current operation similar to Celestia or Dimension or Eigenlayer, where the whole point is you get this one token or one staking experience and you get exposed to all this deal flow and in the process, speed up development, maximize security and and create like more and more and more deal flow and um you know this is something that we've gotten quite good at in the past year this has been ever since we launched ethos and you know the market was like okay only down from here on out we we're like all right you know uh why why isn't this working super well how do we solve it and and so last may uh we kind of began this journey this modular DeFi journey being you know, we've realized one token, many chains doesn't work. Uh, the calculus does not work out. The alignment, the narrative, it reduces our negotiating power with, with networks. Um, so we're going to figure out how do we have one token and many chains in a way that works so that we can drive max value to you guys uh, and, and we can have like max negotiating power. So um, trusted by top teams in the industry, like, you know, we're, we're in every room. Um, the thing that's funny is like, uh, you know, in Denver, I was getting invited to the exclusive parties and, you know, people with their 500 market cap, you know, vaporware projects, uh, nobody really, you know, answers the phone for. Um, and, and in doing that, I kind of realized like, dude, uh, um, we, we need to uh, rearrange ourselves so that we can capture accurately our book of business and the scope of our work, um, because we, we have more DeFi tech than anybody in the business. Uh, I think I, I can say pretty safely at this point, um, and we're accelerating and we're growing, uh, and it's all thanks to chapters. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, in moving to market, like I, I guess, kind of addressing another key issue with our ecosystem is when we launched Grain, for example, and and this is kind of what triggered a lot of our learnings. Like we had no idea how like crypto financing and market share worked at all. Uh, I mean, we did like in theory, like a tiny bit, but like the idea, the concept of like, okay, why, why is a centralized exchange better in many ways than a decentralized exchange? What is the job of a market maker? How do you approach these deals and how do you structure these deals so that, you know, we see projects with no tech launch at insane FTVs and, and have like these insane market structures. And the reason for that is because, you know, you don't need to have tech as as long as you know what you're doing uh, and and how to structure these markets, and that's that's something that we've really been aggressively exploring and and figuring out. And now I'll say we're we're uh, pretty friendly with almost all the the big market makers in the space. And you know we've always thought like, dude, we, I want an oracle for Oath. I want this. I want that. I want the other for Oath. And the problem is we we had no way to really get it, you know, because we didn't know how you know, crypto market structure works. And and the issue is like, you know, we're an engineering firm, you know, and and I would say, um, you know, probably late 2022, early 2023, you know, I I wrote my last test and my my last, you know, code for ethos. And I was like, all right, I need to really figure out how to be a good CEO. Uh, like if if our projects don't take off and, and if our ecosystem doesn't take off with with when I know the tech is awesome and when I know the team is awesome, then uh, we've just, you know, failed ourselves and, and failed a lot of you. Um, and so we're introducing the concept of new token and new token is just a way for us to centralize value accrual, essentially tear away the 
coolest part of the chapters initiative being the value sharing with Oath and plop it onto a way more liquid market surrounded by way more aligned users in a way that does not kind of fit awkwardly into the growth strategy. Um, and, and that, of course, is Ethereum. Uh, apologies in advance uh, to the gas we're all going to spend uh, uh, on this migration. Um, but let me introduce uh, the new token for you. Um, you know, we, we have done a lot of reflection in the past year, like, okay, um, we're an engineering firm. We accept we, you know, <laughs> aren't the best at marketing. We've been getting better. We accept we're not, you know, the absolute kings of, of crypto market making and, and launching these tokens, but we want to get better. And we, we really sat down and we thought, how can we make a perfect token? How can we put it in the perfect environment and how can we give it everything it needs to succeed? And um, really that started with like, if I wanted a token, if I were going to turn all my oath and all my grain into a token, what would I want that token to be? I would want it to have no inflation. I would want it to not be dependent on uh, incentives to survive. So ticket number one, easy. I want single-sided staking, which is something we've become much more comfortable with. Uh, our ability to remain compliant in, in kind of the crypto gray area. And I'll tell you, in, in, it's a much different world than it was in 2022. And, you know, luckily we, we really drilled into our ability to, to navigate the legal environment of crypto, even though our, our uh, market structuring skills weren't super great. Um, so now we're in an insanely good spot uh, compliance wise. And you know, thinking about chapters, it's like I've I've said this before, and I'll say it again, and I'll keep saying it. Like we have found our fit into the market, you know, as the horizontal growth guys, and you know, with chapters, you know, when you're working with market makers and and when you're developing these mid market projects, and everybody in the game is is trading on you know 30x leverage spot, it's like maintaining, uh, you know large bodies, valuations, whatever, uh, is not really that hard, frankly. Um, and, oh my gosh, if I keep getting Slack notifications, I'm going to kill everyone. Um, okay, uh, so, sorry. Um, and, and so, you know, what we're doing is we're kind of playing everything by the meta uh, and, and really growing these projects in the way they're supposed to be, and we're doing it very quickly. And, uh, the result of that is going to be every single project, you know, if we're talking 20, 30, 40 million dollar valuation, which is really attainable, really achievable when, when you know how to, to work these markets better, 10% um, of that streaming to this token 10 to 20 times a year is nutty. Um, and then beyond that, you know, talking time weighted incentives, we, we actually have I mean, one thing that sucks is we haven't been able to put Reliquary on a pedestal, really, because we've had no tokens to emit. Uh, because, again, we didn't have the liquidity, we didn't have the market makers, we couldn't support the incentives. Uh, but with this new token, we have a new version of Reliquary that doesn't require uh, upgrades, I don't think. You can correct me if I'm wrong, UV. It doesn't require manual upgrading. The curves are much more discrete, uh, as in, like, you know, it'll move along the curve like a really smooth curve as opposed to, um, you know, step up and up and up and down. Uh, and and we're like super crazy excited about the implications for governance being, you know, now we have the, the, the bicameral system that we've dreamed of being on one hand, there's, uh, you know, this purely I've been here a long time part of governance. And then there's this I hold a lot of tokens part of governance. And we can actually unite them into a single experience, a single interface, uh, which is super dope. And then, you know, diverse exposure, obviously, I, I expo talked about that in the other slide, you know, stake on Ethereum, get exposure to 10 different networks, easy as. And of course, infinite potential, uh, which I'll go over um, in, in another slide. Uh, so the process, we know the process, we deploy new protocols to up and coming networks. Uh, and, and what was protocol has become super app. Uh, so really we're able to like create these applications super duper fast. Our creative team has created these awesome processes to, to create compelling brands super fast, you know, thanks to a little bit of AI combined with, you know, their, their fabulous high performance skill sets. Um, and this is just going to let us constantly speed ahead of the market and accelerate uh, because 
I know I've talked about it and you guys are probably tired of hearing it, but you know, our, our team is, I think the best DeFi team in the business. And, uh, you know, we're 36 people right now. Like the talent we have on staff is, is mind boggling. And again, the reason we're doing this is so that we can capture that value, um, because it's value that's, that's quite often over overlooked. And, you know, our business partners see the value, our business partners understand and experience the value, but, um, uh, you know, it, it doesn't translate. Um, so let's maybe do a couple case studies uh, just to get your heads in, in the right spot. So we have Aurelius, uh, projected FTV, let's say roughly 20 million. Um, and that circulating on, on deployment would be relatively low. And, and again, these are numbers like, typically we're not gonna talk about these, um, but I, I just really wanna give you guys a good idea of, of why chapters matter. Um, and, and our team can launch, you know, 12 or more of these per year, okay? And 10% of that earmarked for this new foundation and these new stakers, that's $2 million, okay? And what's $2 million times 12 if we do one of these per month, okay? And uh, what happens when we, we increase in size and our network grows and, and we can do 20 a month, maybe a 40 million FTV, and, and that really gives you the idea of kind of the compounding network effects that I talk about on Twitter a lot and that I talk about and all this stuff. Um, this is a little bit of a peek behind the curtain and we're accelerating guys. Um, and it's very dope. And, uh, you know, same slide for, for ironclad on mode. Uh, so we're punching a little bit higher, same deal. It's like 20 to 30 million FTV, 12 to 20 times a year. It, it really is like, uh, <laughs> kind of awesome. Um, so yeah, let's let's think small. Let's let's do the math here a little bit. Uh, so if we've got 20 to 30 mil FTV per deployment, let's just say 20, 12 deployments a year, 10% of the supply earmarked for stakers, that's 24 mil in incentives per year. And let's say 60% of the supply is staked and we're targeting 30% EPR. That's a $130 million FTV baseline. And that's why this migration kind of makes sense. That's why it's kind of cool because like we, we can deliver the yield like that at this point is easy for us. Um, every single network, every single market maker, every single everybody is totally desperate for deal flow. And that's what we're supplying. And we're supplying it faster and more securely and with better risk management than any team can possibly do right now, uh, which we've demonstrated in the past. Um, so thinking big, like what's the long-term game plan? Um, so this is all about chapters. Everything I've talked about has been why, are, why do chapters matter, but why does this, this new token matter? Um, so let's say this new token, we get an Oracle, which is gonna be brain dead easy for us now that we freaking know how. Um, that's, that's 12 new integrations into, into lending platforms per year. So huge exposure to lending markets, tons of leverage available for, for holders of this token. Amazing utility out of the box. You know, even just within our own network, ignoring all the integrations we'd be able to get elsewhere. Um, you know, talking about uh, a, a liquid staking derivative of this new token, building stable coins on that, integrating that into, into lending platforms, creating opportunities for levered exposure uh, and, and other, other ways uh, to expose, yourself, <laughs> expose yourselves, interestingly, um, to this new ecosystem. Um, you know, talking about centralized exchange integrations, this is something we finally know how to do. You know, this is the first, well, I, I would say Q4 last year was the first time we've ever talked to centralized exchanges seriously and actually known how to take deals past the finish line. Um, so even like, I mean, I'm not going to say we're, we're going to get on a tier one DEX, but like these are, these are conversations that are open to us now. Um, and, and we can't take advantage of, of this business or this book of business with Oath and Grain. Um, they're too small. They're too embattled. You know, Grain still doesn't have bridges yet. Uh, it's, it's a total, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, you know, multi-chain exploded. We tried to condense. We tried to make it work. Um, you know, we, we learned a lot of stuff in the process. And it's like now it's, you know, we know how to solve the problems. And, you know, we've, we've avoided doing this because, you know, pain and agony, um, but, but I think it's time. And talking about like making our marketing easier, you know, like 
think of this huge network of applications, how can we tie them together? And how can we create a unified narrative? Because really it's like, okay, modular DeFi, this is modular DeFi. You know, if you look at the new oath.eco website, it kind of hints at, at what the narrative will be, but modular DeFi, stake token, get infinite deal flow, infinite incentives, infinite rewards, it's awesome, okay? And, and now with this centralized body, our AI capabilities are far superior to most teams in Web3. You know, our, our ability to kind of develop applications, generally speaking, and protocols is far superior. So like the, the fun, cool ways that we can interconnect all these things uh, are just so dope. And in the process, just totally vastly like chopping off, you know, all of the bulk and the fat uh, that comes with the two foundation system, the the you know constant attempts to to overcome uh, the the bridge outages and things like that, um, and then talking about acceleration, like I mean I know for a fact if we wanted to, there are there are one thousand four hundred EVM chains on chain list right now. If we wanted to, we could probably within a month deploy on all of them. <laughs> Of course, like that would not be worthwhile. And, and a big part of the strategy is the, the GTM, you know, getting the relationships, you know, building the networks, getting the, the whatevers. Um, and then talking about fat governance. So if we have this huge governing body, uh, this, this really nice, beautiful uh, system in the center that's kind of handling all the prioritization and pushing forward all the growth, then you know, uh, we'll be able to cut bigger checks and, and, and get better deals, uh, which right now, again, like we're coming to the table with, with dinky old oath and grain, we're getting good deals and, and we're getting solid, solid flow, but having this big body of community members and of people that are in our corner, uh, I think will, will take things to a new level. Um, and then Granary V2, uh, I, I, you know, it's something I talk about a lot and have talked about a lot. We're finally just about out of audit. Um, and like it will become kind of the crown jewel uh, of not only our DeFi stack, but I think of like DeFi as a whole. Um, it is like truly a tremendous effort by our CTO and co-founder uh, alongside, you know, a, a team of wonderful engineers um, making it happen. So uh you know we we have the potential to touch the upper market um with this this new protocol um and yeah i i know this is complicated this is a very complex transaction um especially if it's not your full-time job i know staying on top of these things is a big old pain in the ass um but you know really all i can do is you know thank you uh for you know sticking with us and and being here like we have a very clear path uh, to, you know, capturing the narrative and, and capturing the, the bull market flow and, you know, making everybody feel proud um, to be an oath and a grain believer. Uh, and I think really like the, the first step is, is going to be ripping off this Band-Aid. Um, and, and quite frankly, I'm extremely excited to do it. And it's going to give us like an insane boost immediately. Um, like even just the ability uh, to engage with infrastructure providers and market makers and centralized exchanges uh, in a new way with a new token is is going to totally change everything. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I think we would try to make it work anyway, uh, but I think if we really want to be successful, uh, we, we want to follow through with this plan here. But yeah, uh, happy to answer any questions. I know the chat has been popping off. Uh, and yeah, uh, any, anything to add rest of the committee here? Uh, no, I mean, you sum up like at a top level, you absolutely captured everything. Uh, and I hope everybody had a lot of their questions already answered by the presentation. Uh, Charles is monitoring the chat pretty carefully. So please drop your questions in and we will answer as they come up. Yeah, and I guess a, f a funny thing is we have 59 people in this chat. Um, projects with billions of, of FTV can't pull this many people into a chat, you know, and I think it just speaks to even at our lowest, uh, so to speak, um, you know, we, we have the power to pull people together and get shit done. Um, and I think everybody in this room right now 
you know, is going to be running victory laps in their group chats, uh, hopefully in the next, you know, three to six months here. But yeah, Charles, you want to kick off the questions? Yeah, for sure. Um, first of all, great presentation. Thanks for that. Um, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, the first question that was dropped a while ago, has a name or branding been chosen for new token? Um, short answer is yes, but we're not going to share it. Is that, uh, am I right in saying that? Um, uh, yeah, we've, we've like workshopped it a little bit in the background, but until, yeah. yeah, I mean, we'll go to vote first. I think the community is generally on board and then we can share, share what we've kind of thought up with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been brainstormed somewhat. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Someone asked about the vesting. Um, unclaimed grain, unclaimed oath. Um, do you guys want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, so I'll work with the guys to make sure that we can um, essentially at the end of the migration, uh, because during the migration, you'll still be able to claim and, and migrate. So at the end of the migration, uh, we will snapshot all of the unclaimed vests, and then we will administratively migrate them um so once oath and grain are deprecated your vest will still continue because it's um because it's immutable but the tokens will be deprecated so there's not really anything to do with them and then uh, we will essentially migrate the vest balances to the new token and uh what that looks like is not Necess is, is not really confirmed yet. Uh, we will probably have a separate forum discussion for it uh, because we have some options. We can migrate the vests to be uh, the exact same uh, end dates, which is uh, sometime in 2020. It's, I think, end of March in 2026 for Oath, and, and Grain has some years to go. Um, so kind of option one is that all of the vests just stay the same, but they migrated to new token. Option two is that uh, we can scale the vest lengths so that they both finish at the same time, maybe in line with the end date for Oath. Um, and you know, option three is that we just scale it to scale both tokens to a twelve-month vest uh, under new token. So we have a few options. We'll consider them. We'll probably discuss it with you guys, and then uh, we'll proceed with the best option. But ultimately, yes, unclaimed vests will get migrated. Yeah. Nice. Um, I have nothing to add. Okay. <laughs> no, go ahead. Okay. Um, something that came up uh, just recently. Uh, there's questions before this one, but um, to touch on this, um, I think is important. Uh, a lot of people in the discussions and in the forum talking about timelines and expressing their um, for those who are for the proposal, um, expressing their want for it to be hasty, um, considering the market we're in and all this stuff. So um, I think UV has, has said this before, but um, I will say, given that the proposal passes, it will be priority number one. Um, uh, I believe I'm right in saying that. Yeah, and I guess to add to that, like, um, as many of you have guessed, you know, we didn't come into this proposal blind. This isn't an off the hip sort of thing. Um, and like, you know, the idea came uh, a while ago and, and I went to Denver specifically to validate the concept um, and, and talk to people. Uh, and, and so, yeah, a lot of the hard work has been done. Um, and the hard work, of course, kind of coincides with the chapters work. It's like, hey, we have this this deal flow happening through chapters, and hey, also uh, there's this thing, uh, th this restructuring that we're doing on the other end. So, um, yeah, uh, a lot of the groundwork has been laid, and uh, market makers, VCs, KOLs, all of the stakeholders you kind of want helping drive a GTM strategy uh, are kind of uh, ready and waiting, so to speak. Nice. Um, OK, two people have asked about um, about existing silos um, and chapters and stuff. Um, so you know, Yuzu, Ironclad, obviously a big one. 
Um, what is the plan for sort of existing um, launches or, or protocols that have gone live um, under the grain or the oath banner um, currently? Yeah, okay. I mean, oh, you can you can hit that, Yubi. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, so the, the protocols that are uh, existing as they are now, we have the capacity to uh, either integrate a CDP into them or vice versa, integrate a money market into them. Um, it kind of depends on the way that that silo or chapter wants to go. And it, in my opinion, it makes the most sense to layer one onto the other um, because I think part of the part of the reason that Aurelius is so successful is that the the branding is cohesive. Um, you know, Ethos and Granary have this like obfuscated relationship in on optimism and, and it makes it makes the integration a little bit harder to see up front. Uh, whereas Aurelius having that cohesive branding I think helps a lot. And so it makes the most sense to lay them together. Additionally, the uh, the modularity that Granary has developed for their silo deployments. Uh, we are gonna start building the uh, <clears throat> the features of chapters are going to start being built in that modular fashion to plug into that same management dashboard. Uh, and so it makes the most sense for the two components to build into each other. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about the Roman Empire now. It makes the <laughs> most sense for the, two, for the two sides to build into each other because it means we can manage them through the modular super app that we have. Um, which basically allows us to turn features on and off, uh, which allows us to, uh, you know, deploy the exact features that the network wants in the order that they want and at the timing that they want to perfectly suit the demands of the market on yeah. each network. Yeah, it is. This is really like um, a bespoke operation. And, uh, you know, whenever, like, Whenever we kind of introduce the concept and introduce our company to to a new foundation or new network, um, a lot of it is like, hey, like sure, we can, you know, speed run a million miles past, you know, whatever, you know, network incumbents or whatever other projects, but we don't want to. Like the goal is that we can complement their go-to-market strategy that we can complement their kind of flagship protocols because a lot of every every network is like oh their homie you know is is making uh, a lending protocol and they want them to be you know the the tip top uh, or they're advising something or whatever and you know to us the success of a network uh depends on the quality and the quantity of the deal flow um like tokens are what networks want um, they want new tokens they want new projects uh, I think we've we've found time and time again that you know the same old project coming over is usually like a net negative, um, and it costs networks tens of millions of dollars. And sometimes it's good, like with an Ave, for example, they bring all of their VCs and and market makers with them, and they bring Chainlink with them, oftentimes, um, which which is sometimes worth the price tag. But really, at the end of the day. Everybody in here wants good deals and they want cool new projects. Um, and we can just deliver that uh, super quickly and super securely. Um, so yeah, uh, long story short, <laughs> I didn't even answer the question, but um, every like Ironclad, Aurelius, we have another chapter coming in a, a couple weeks here that's getting a code review this upcoming weekend. Um, you know, we've got like literally we're booked through the year for chapters, you know, we, we potentially could be going past our, our one per month mark, um, depending on how, you know, much people get excited about new token and, and how much we can scale. But uh, everything that exists now and everything that will ever exist uh, will be kind of uh, stewarded by the new token foundation, um, which is just like us changing the name of one of the existing foundations. and. We, we might create like a, well, I'm not going to get into it, but um, yeah, it, it'll be like uh, cool, I guess. Nice. Um, I think this is a good time to highlight um, not only the benefits from sort of on, on the engineering front um, and the unification there, but also like the admin side. Um, you, you probably mentioned that in your 
presentation and I might have missed it, but um, you know, everybody coming together and doing working towards one goal um, is there's obvious benefits to that, and you know, biz dev and admin um, and just organizational um, you know administrative work uh, is also it's hugely beneficial for everybody to be on the same page there and working towards the same thing. So um, yeah, just wanted to highlight that. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think you want. Oh, keep going. Oh, go ahead. Oh. Uh, I just uh, I'd like to move along a bit. There's sure, sure, um, yeah. there's a few points from Aurelio in the chat about um why the chapters have their own branding and there are, and some people are asking why the chapters have their own tokens. There's obviously uh there, there's two ways to go about this. We can deploy with the same branding on every chain, or we can deploy separate branding on every chain. Now there's pros and cons to every approach. Uh, separate branding lets it be native to the chain. It lets that network own that product. It also isolates the risk between the products because if one of them has, heaven forbid, some kind of issue, um, it's it's risk isolated from the rest of the from the rest of the products. Uh, now, on top of that, the the isolation is it's it's a branding isolation. It's a risk isolation. It's an ec economic isolation, but it's also um a value uh, a value capture or a value loss isolation part of the issue that we have with oath is that every chapter that we deploy uh under the oath brand if it's every, every product that we have under the oath brand if it's incentivized by oath then the lowest performing product will always dictate the value accrual of oath because we will continue, we'll have to continue to incentivize things in order to keep them alive. And whichever one is the lowest performer will just will drag down Oath value, which drags down its ability to support all the other products. When you look at something like Magpie and their sub DAOs, their value accrual is isolated because each sub DAO has its own token which can support itself. And whichever one is the lowest performing token, it doesn't have any negative effect on the other sub DAOs and it doesn't have a negative effect on the Magpie token because the Magpie token pulls value. It, it, it the, the value is pushed up to, uh, to the Magpie token, which means that if, if one of the sub DAOs isn't performing as well, it just won't push up as much value as the others but it doesn't pull any value out of the Magpie token because the Magpie token is not required to emit anything to those uh, sub DAOs. In the same vein that the new token, if, if one of our chapters doesn't succeed, the new token will be relatively unaffected because it doesn't have to support that, um, that chapter. The chapter has its own token and can support itself. And any chapter that doesn't do very well won't have a negative impact on the new token, but all the chapters that do extremely well, which we hope will be most of them, if not all of them, will continually push value up to new token. Yeah, and and I think Roelio, you're you're kind of like warm um, in that you know uh, with with new token you get a ton of added negotiating power with networks. Um, so you can compete with native projects much better. You can give them the deal flow and the new asset flow that they're looking for. You can get those airdrops. You can get that early to market premium. And I think something we realized, especially with Grain and Oath, as we started our omni-chain journey, like the one token many chains thing straight up does not work. Um, you know, it's like there are there are freak instances where people can somehow like collect ten million, twenty million dollar checks to make it work. Um, but that's just not really like who we are right now. Um, but what we can do is we can create ten or twenty million dollars of value notional uh, on on each of these individual networks. And one of the biggest thing that people that care about tokens look for, including market makers and and other market participants, um, is a high degree of reflexivity with the chain that it is on. Um, you know, and Oath has in, in its history been notorious for being very not reflexive. You know, in the bear market, we were a great performer, um, but in the bull market, uh, it's like we're, we're left behind. And, and that's kind of because we don't have a home. Um, we don't have like a solid 
ground and and like the strongest force in crypto is is affinity and beta and with this chapter's motto we can kind of like instead of trying to be one 100 million dollar uh entity which requires pushing against all sorts of diminishing returns going absolutely crazy five 20 million dollar entities are in, not only incredibly easy but create a lot of value and upside for everyone um so you know our our vision with grain for example it was like okay if we want to support all these networks we need to have a big fdv we need to be big and fat and amazing uh and and right at the top and you know especially without our understanding of of crypto market structures that was kind of doomed to failure uh you know and that is something that we find it's it's much easier and faster to be nimble and every new chapter can feature new uh tools and and new features and interesting new things that if we were iterating on a single platform and we needed to freaking upgrade ethos or have everybody uh you know migrate to a new version of ethos every time we wanted to to ship an upgrade that that's like untenable so now we've kind of created a way to to test these features uh in in a much kind of safer more more iterative and and faster environment uh if if that all makes sense nice well said guys um i hope roy leo is satisfied um yeah. anyways uh okay so shout out to roy leo shout out to yeah him. shout out yeah that guy's a beast you know to you yeah. sir or ma'am um okay so null uh had a question early and mr roy also um posed a similar one um and that is in terms of the you know new token um revenue sharing or um new token incentives given by each chapter um and i there was a couple of comments about this in the forum as well um so as we've seen with aurelius you know um be oath stakers or possibly but what will be new token stakers are getting a piece of um the supply um, Null's question was related to, you know, how sustainable is this and can we design a system where, um, it doesn't, it's not purely a percentage of the supply and it's more, um, maybe a mix of the supply and, um, uh, maybe some staking revenue, things of this nature. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess we'll start there and there's a little bit of an addition for Mr. Roy as well. Um, but how, how are you thinking about this? How are we thinking about this? Do you want to take yeah. this movie or do you want me to? Yeah, uh, I love this show. I've been thinking about this stuff for a while now. <laughs> okay, go for it. So, uh, yes, valid observations. Now, in most of the slides and discussions that we have, we talk about uh, just handing 10% of the tokens to new token stakers. That's really just a representation of passing on the value. It's not, it's not a hard-coded rule. It's not something that we necessarily have to stick to for every deployment. We can test and iterate and go through governance and figure out how we want to pass that value because there are several ways to do it. Yeah. And, <clears> yes. And I, oh, okay. you're clearing your voice. Okay, oh, you can jump ahead. in. <laughs> well, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in. Well, I don't want to rug you. I'll I'll try okay. to be conservatively communi communicative here. Okay. So um, imagine there are two camps. Okay, I'm going to explain the two camps, UV, and then pass it back to you. So go on. Camp number one is we give new token. Uh, a a cut. So let's say we have 10% earmarked, 5% of that, or or some cut we send to new token directly over a period of six, nine, or 12 months. Um, I've like I've become more conservative with these numbers just because keeping float low is the best way to keep long-term outcomes very positive. Um, and then let's say with the other, on the other hand, we have another portion of the token earmarked for even longer term uh generation of of uh revenue or fees or whatever uh for for new token stakers and if you want to kind of elaborate on that uv yeah so there's um yeah there's many ways that we can tackle this obviously we can just emit the chapter or the the new deployment token to new token stakers uh we can pass a portion of the the uh, product token up to the new new token treasury, and that new token treasury can either distribute it to new token stakers. It can stake a portion of it in the new product, 
for um you know for yield that gets distributed to new token holders and probably on the the simplest level um a chapter can just lp with new token on the l2 and commit uh you know if we want to pass up 10 percent of the value then maybe the chapter commits 20 percent of its revenue towards that lp so that it's constantly using 10 percent of its revenue to buy back the new token uh the effect being that we then have liquidity on layer twos and we have that constant value accrual by way of uh, the chapter essentially being like exit liquidity or you know pro providing constant buy pressure. Um, so I guess to summarize that component, there are many ways that we can uh, that we can effectively transfer that value, uh, and it's kind of about what suits that particular deployment, what network it's on, and uh, you know what approach governors want to take towards it. Uh, I think there were some parts of that uh, of the original question that we didn't quite answer. Charles, do you do you, what, what parts haven't we discussed? Hmm. Um, I think you just touched on it. Uh, I'm we should not rely on the fact that new chapters will work, that new chains will get traction. Maybe having revenue from good chapters can guarantee a decent rev in case most chapters fail, um, which I think you just touched on. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely the point of having isolated deployments with their own tokens. If 99% yeah. of them fail, it doesn't affect the new token. The 1% one, the 1 that absolutely knock it out of the park will, will just continue to transfer that performance up to the new token. It's performance, you know, risk isolation. Yeah, and, and how we're aiming, like, we are being very targeted in, in how we're approaching these markets. We're literally like putting a target on the, the middle market and saying, hey, this is our jam. This is what we're pitching to foundations. And like, again, we're not, achieve, we're not reaching the point of diminishing returns in terms of like how, how these things are going to be capitalized and how these markets are going to be structured. Um, it's like, like, it could be a total ghost chain. It could be total crap. And, you know, we can, you know, maintain a positive direction and what i did find and you know i've been negotiating these liquidity deals quite a bit um you know and and what i found is uh whales market makers lps whatever don't like bridging you know they want us they want to provide liquidity on a chain they're already at that's why we moved so quickly to mode that's why blast is really popping off and that's also why aurelius isn't growing as quickly as ironclad um you know because it's like you know, hey, getting them over that hurdle to get to the new chain, uh, you know, with, with 10, 15, 20 million dollars is like, it, it requires a lot of hand holding and begging and pleading saying, oh, dude, you know, mantle's dope, I swear. Uh, so a lot of it is up to the chain, but that's kind of like we are allocators. We're allocating our resources to the chains we think are going to be best. You know, and we've got base, we've got Arbitrum, we've got Blast, we've got Fraxtal, uh, we've got Linea, we've got Barachain, we've got all these amazing networks. Like, and you know, we're we're talking to all of them, and all of them are 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 pretty excited. Um, so it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of work to run out of chains that uh, are good, if you know what I'm saying. It's like uh, <laughs> there are so many amazing networks out there. That we would have to really uh, be stupid to, to not at least be somewhat successful. Nice. Um, nice. Well said again. Um, yeah, I am also for the token being named UV. No, I'm kidding. Um, Kickflip. Damn. Throwback. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, who is this question? I think Empo posed this question a while ago, but um, they were wondering about the, the marketing budget that a proposal was passed for recently, um, or I guess semi-recently. Um, can that be used to promote new token? Um, what about sex listings, oracles, VC interests? Has there been anything going on in the background? Or is it just kind of, you know, we hope for the best that these will happen? Yeah. Um, you did touch on this in the presentation a bit, but uh, if yeah. you'd like to reiterate 
uh, yeah. yeah the, the groundwork is is laid you know um this isn't us like whipping a proposal that we don't know if if we're going to be able to deliver on um the groundwork is laid like all this infrastructure you know uh marketing budget is there it's not going to be the same marketing budget it's likely going to be bigger but i'll tell you um with the market as hot as it is right now influencers and promoters are paying uh for the right to promote these projects uh, and it's really just a matter of trading again deal flow for promotion deal flow for grants deal flow for xyz and that's why you know we kind of control our destiny here because we are creating a modular system where we can create a highly maintainable highly secure well managed platform in minutes um you know and you know, doing the branding, doing the marketing, doing the community building is, is you know, just a, another way for us to add some special sauce, doing the full go-to-market strategy, doing the centralized exchange listings, establishing the long-term relationships with market makers and market participants. Again, that's just some secret sauce. So, um, you know, our, our clients, the foundations and, and partners are uh, really taking well to this. They're starting to see the vision. And I think, you know, with the launch of the AU token and the Ironclad token, uh, people are going to be salivating uh, at, at the at the opportunity to work with us. Um, so, yeah, we're we're just going to keep uh, working really hard and and impressing and delivering, and we have the experience to do that. Um, you know, I think our size right now is is a little wimpy, um, but you know, our our book of business is very much not wimpy. Uh, and really, again, this is kind of a matching exercise. Like, how can we like restructure everything so that uh, like what's happening in the background and what you guys see in the foreground um, is somewhat comparable? Nice. Um, dope. We've gotten through most of them here. Um, chat is on fire. It's hard to keep up. Uh, okay, uh, what did I see? Oh yeah, um, so someone asked about um, migrating their oath to you know V two if they have V one oath, and is that going to matter? I, I I feel like I can um, say pretty confidently that um, we can support both pretty easily um, in case someone has V one oath and is kind of not in the know there. Um, but again, this might be a good opportunity to say that, um, you know, like, I guess, ask the question of, um, more details around this and actual, um, execution, given that the sentiment, the sentiment vote passes. Um, yeah, uh, there was something else related that I wanted to ask. What was that question? I, was that even <laughs> someone? Someone was. It wasn't really a question. Someone was asking if they had need needed to. You know, if they have V one oath. Do they need to migrate to V two? I feel like that. You know, it'll be pretty yeah. easy to support V one as well as V two. Yeah. We're like, um, uh, uh, we we uh, will bust our asses to make this easy for you guys, and uh, you know. It's it, it's not necessarily going to be like a walk in the park. It'll be annoying every time we do these freaking things. It's annoying, um, but I like to think of uh, that one meme where it's like uh, you know Donald Duck is whining and complaining, and then Mickey's like, "What are you going to do? Just lay down and die?" Uh, and uh, so we're very actively not laying down and dying. Um, so just bear with us, and you know our goal is our goal is to uh make you guys super happy and uh we have the tools to do that so uh another oh, yeah. kind of but uh i think i am <laughs> getting at the point like if if it's if it's troublesome for you just hit us up and we'll figure it out hey, bro, bro jw are you kidding me whose stash is better my stash is clearly better than beavis's sorry beavis. oh yeah mine is really bad dude oh, beavis, is too, beavis pulls Ooh, on his horrible. Oh, yeah, Corval probably, probably has Charles, Charles beat though. I, yeah. I so you want my mustache? Can you can actually hear me though, right? Like I can. Yeah, we can hear terrible. you now. <laughs> okay. One of the things uh, that I saw earlier was about Reaper vaults and how they sort of fit into this thing. And I, I, I know we just had like a nice little closer there almost, but I wanted to touch on, I guess, the vision. If you look at Harbor, for example, there are many features on the Harbor uh, silo interface that you know we want to bring across 
to every single application. One of the ones that's actually underlooked, uh, and we haven't really promoted it very well, is the double farming uh, that exists on Harbor. So I yeah. guess I just wanted to highlight that much of the technology still exists. You know, Reaper is the engine behind Ethos, and it's like the ability for the collateral to earn yield. It's also the engine behind Granary. Uh, so these things are built into the, the structures of how we are able to provide so much efficiency and security. So they're yeah. not really going away. And I know there's comments coming up because I suppose, you know, we're now in a market condition where Reaper vaults, you know, can actually generate quite substantial fees depending on adoption, et cetera. So we're conscious of it. Don't worry. The tech is still there. Like if I was to show you a tech tree of, of all the things that Oath and Granary have been working on, you know, when we combine this into one thing, it's, there's not really many uh, communities or other like uh, products that can come close to the super app that we're actually going to be able to deliver uh, yeah. in a modular fashion over time. So get ready to see, you know, the, the sort of harbor, like the menus on these applications fill up over time yeah. as more and more modules you know, poured over. Every, every app you see comes with it, like so much periphery and, and so many, you know, repositories dedicated to DevOps and, and security and monitoring, et cetera. Um, and that's that's really our secret sauce, and that's why we can move so fast. You know, Roelio, uh, he's kind of a newer entrant to the to the community, uh, but uh, um, like the the maintenance is, of course, a, a beast. But it's a beast that we've uh, really learned how to conquer in these past twelve months, um, and now we're kind of learning how to conquer the the GTM beast, the marketing beast, um, et cetera. So uh, you know, shout out to our we the the hard carrying of of you know a fifteen man engineering staff through the bear market um, kind of paid dividends on on the DevOps and maintenance side, and it let us clean up everything we made uh, in twenty twenty one. Basically, we're still cleaning, and there's still work to do. But um, yeah, like our shit is so dope, and uh, there's so much value, and we don't flex it enough. You know, we don't talk about it enough, um, but it is most certainly there. Shout out Phantom mm. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, the the single staking is such a huge win. Um, and in terms of like ETH gas costs, um, you know, we're gonna try and make those as minimal as possible. And um, Reliquary has gotten a recent upgrade. I'm assuming I could talk about this. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the leveling up, so um, now the, the contract now supports, it's the levels aren't so um, spaced out. It's There's actually an infinite number of levels and there's auto leveling up. So you don't have to manually level up your relic. Um, it will just um, continuously get more mature um, every you know second, every block, um, and it will automatically level you up. So that's... Um, yeah, now that's efficient, exactly, Samson. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, yeah, it's so, awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the goal is like, okay, you have this token, and you just stake it once on mainnet, and you just get streamed uh, rewards, and you don't have to level it up, you don't have to touch it. Um, you, you know, sometimes maybe you have to do some claiming. Um, Auto Compound is an interesting one. Uh, I don't like, believe that's on I guess, the, like... Um, Someone else will do it if we don't. So definitely yeah. is being considered. And one of the things that we could do with that auto compounding vault is actually ship it across uh, DeFi such that everyone on all the other like layer twos and other chains can access the the yield, but not the underlying tokens. If you want to get, you know, AU tokens, if you want to get, you know, ironclads, uh, you know, token, etc., you will need to be on ETH and staking to actually get the drip. If that makes sense. Yeah, bro, we're gonna be dripped yeah, out. And um, you know, again, like uh, uh, I think Royalio also missed our um, like ETHSEC influencer arc. Uh, so I'm I in talking with all these VCs and whatever. Like, so many teams are here literally just to like get to TGE or token launch and then just dip, you know, and leave whatever outsourced maintenance workers uh, to to carry things on. Um, and it's such an insane differentiator. Like people get so excited. I'm like, actually, 
you know, we're autistic. We're here for 10 years. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, we're, we're ETH sec nerds. Uh, you know, we've been at it a while. Um, and like, it, it's, it's a breath of fresh air now as much as it was in 2021. And we've kind of like, uh, I think lost a little confidence as far as our, our ability to communicate to the, the public about like, Hey, like, we're beast, you know? Um, and I, you know, I, I don't want to like really hammer it home, uh, so, so bluntly, uh, but it, at the end of the day, the thesis is bigger is better. And if you want to create a secure DeFi protocol and you want a, a predictable go to market experience and you want quality maintenance and quality development and a quality upgrade path, you can't have a three-man skeleton crew. You can't out, you can't outsource the work. That's just absolute crap. Um, and so we, as as this thirty-six man team and growing, you know, with more part time and and even more apprentices, et cetera, like we can give you the experience you'd expect from the tip of the top uh, in terms of like you know the the aves the whatevers and you know we're getting better at uh keeping like getting everything totally automated especially on the tokenomics front um but yeah like bigger is 100 percent better and and we're going to keep growing and you know it, you have this you know maybe 20 30 40 million dollar protocol sitting on a network but you're not getting 20 30 40 million dollar service you know, you're getting the service and the security and the risk management um, that comes with, uh, you know, us. And and that is the selling point to foundations. That's what they're salivating over. That's what, you know, these these investors and, and whatnot are salivating over. And, um, you know, the, the goal is really to kind of drive home, like, if if you want people to onboard to your network, you need this like affordable deal flow token flow project flow you know nobody wants to buy your vc you know uh you know pump and dump scam um i mean may, some vc pump and dump scams are awesome but uh you know it, it's like we just have sensible solutions secure solutions um and and we're good at managing them and getting better and you know we're we're operating on decade plus time horizons um, which is just rare, and uh, you know, I'm I'm glad you guys are uh, joining us on on the trip here. And yeah, we were very lucky uh, to onboard uh, the the winner of our Code Farina contest on Ethos Reserve. He is on our team now. Unbelievable security engineer uh, and security researcher, Bay Rao. Shout out to him. Um, but yeah, you'll like. <laughs> We're we're good at nerd sniping the best talent, so uh, it's very awesome, very fun. That that's all I got. I I know we're over time. Uh, I'm excited about this. I think all of you should be excited about it. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go, let's go. Yeah, nice happy um, hour in six minutes. This one for sure. Yeah, oh yeah. Hell yeah. Um, to sort of yeah. close it out, I maybe you guys have a couple of final thoughts, but to close it out, I'm going to set you up and say, what's next? How do we proceed in this very moment? Um, oh, whoops. I already hit the that. Wow. Button. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. No, that was such good timing. Um, everybody, uh, Crypto AS has dropped in the chat um, a snapshot for UV's proposal um, to get put to a vote. So let's, uh, let's get this thing rolling. Um, that was amazing timing. Yeah, yeah, hit the hit the snapshot and um you know, uh go ahead tell your friends uh you know, we're not we're not laying over and dying uh, and like I would very much like, you know, this this new token to kind of be the total center of grassroots defi. Um and I think we can do it. I think we have the network, we have the skills. We've got to like do a lot of like kowtowing and uh, you know, making people feel better, you know, okay, grain sucked. I get it. It sucked for us too. Um, uh, but you know, we, we've learned a lot from it and, uh, yeah, uh, I'm excited to really hit the nail on the head, uh, with, with new token here. So sayonara, everybody. <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate the attendance and nice to see some new faces obviously coming in from, uh, I tried to make an effort to post in each of the, the different discords. So nice to see many of you 
and uh, yeah, please have a say. That would be fantastic. And thanks uh, for the presentation. I thought it was really good. Thank you. Yeah, great presentation. Honestly, the chat was fire the entire time. So thanks, guys, for tapping in and be active. Yeah, keep the energy up. Yeah, best community. Best community! This is a community <sighs> coin now. All right, see you, everybody. I'm going to get back to work. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks for coming.